Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And this video is going to be the most useful math lesson of your life, also known as candle math. Now, in a couple of slides, I do have timestamps for later on in this video. So if you only want to learn about certain aspects of this video, I will have timestamps, but let's go ahead and get right into it. And I just wanted to let you guys know that in my examples later on in this PowerPoint, I will be showing all of the examples in both ounces and grams because I know that not all of my viewers use grams. A lot of you guys do use ounces. So I want to make sure that everybody is understanding all of the examples. And if you guys ever have any questions on conversions or how to convert something, I always just go to Google, type in OZ to G and you're able to do conversions, you can do conversions on pretty much everything on Google. All right, so moving right along into what we are going to be learning today. So I broke it up into three different sections just so it could be a little bit more organized to explain. So section one is just going to be going over some vocabulary that we're going to be talking about in the rest of the PowerPoint, as well as how to find the fill weight for your jar and how to choose the fragrance oil percentage for your candle. So we're going to be going over some very basic fundamentals for candle making in section one. And then in section two, I'm going to be going over why you should use the formula one ounce of fragrance oil to one pound of wax indefinitely and also a lot of common candle math mistakes that lead to using too much fragrance oil and then in section three we are going to be going over the formula and how to calculate the exact amount of fragrance oil and wax needed for your jar to make a candle without any excess liquid and I will also be explaining to you guys on how to use that formula to make more than one candle all right, so section one is understanding fill weight and fragrance oil percentage. So here's just the vocabulary for going into this PowerPoint. FO is an abbreviation for fragrance oil. It's very commonly used in the candle making community. And fill weight is the amount of liquid wax your jar can hold. So that's either up to the fill line if your jar has a fill line or to your desired fill level. And I will show you guys an example right here. So this is a tin that has a fill line and you can see how high to fill it up to, whereas this jar does not have a visible fill line. So that is kind of the difference between those two. And then net weight is the total amount of wax and fragrance oil weight of a finished candle. All right, so moving right along to some basic tips for candle making. The first one is when making candles, every calculation is based on weight, not volume. So both wax and fragrance oil need to be measured in weight on a scale. You do not want to be measuring in volume. Make sure that you own a scale so that you are able to weigh everything out. And something to note is that both solid wax and liquid wax weigh the same. So right there in the beginning, I had solid wax. It weighed eight ounces, and then I was was able to melt it down using the double boiler method and it weighed again eight ounces once it was in its liquid state. Number two is whenever you purchase jars from suppliers, they are always sold by volume. So if you purchase a nine ounce jar, that does not mean it will hold nine ounces of wax. You have to find the fill weight from either the supplier's website. Most of the time, if you purchase from a candle supplier, they will give you a fill weight. But if they don't, or if you have any confusions on what the fill weight might be, you have to perform your own fill weight test. So how do you do that? All you have to do is take a scale, Put your jar on the scale, tear it, and then pour liquid wax into your jar up until the fill line. So in this uh, example that I'm giving, I stop at about 7.5 ounces. And on the website, it says that it can comfortably hold about eight ounces. So it, there's a little bit of a difference there. And as you can see, I probably could have fit a little bit more on there, but that's just an example of how to perform a fill weight test. Something else that's very, very important to note is that water weighs more than wax. So you cannot use water to find your fill weight because your calculations will be off. You must use liquid wax to find your fill weight. You cannot use solidified wax because it's not going to give you an accurate result. Just melt down some wax, pour it into your container, and you will be able to accurately find your fill weight. You can see down here that these are filled up to the same amount. This is water, this is wax, this weighs six ounces, this weighs seven ounces. 
Number three is the fragrance oil percentage is chosen based on the wax you are using, not the size of the jar. This is a common question I get all the time that people believe they have to choose a different percentage for a smaller jar, but that is not true at all. It's just based on the wax you are using. So make sure you look on the supplier website for your wax and look and see what the fragrance oil percentage is. A lot of times companies will have either a range so for instance, six to 12% is what some suppliers may recommend for the wax, or they might say the max fragrance oil load for this wax is 10%. And just to avoid as much confusion as possible for today's example formulas, I will be using 10% fragrance oil in all of the examples. And then one thing to know about adding too much fragrance oil is that if you add too much, it can cause a lot of issues with your candle. So that's why it's so important to make sure we are doing the calculations properly. Some of the issues are a large crazy flame, usually with soot, sweating on top of the candle in moderate to cool temperatures. So if it's room temperature in the room and it's sweating, that is not a good thing, um, or a burning smell in your hot throw. And hot throw is just how the candle smells when it's lit. Section two is common candle math mistakes. So this first one is not a mistake, but it is very limiting. And this is very, very common amongst beginners is to use one ounce of fragrance oil to one pound of wax. So my opinion on this is that it's really, really good for beginners to understand the fundamentals of candle making, but it shouldn't be used indefinitely, meaning you shouldn't just continue using this throughout your time of making candles. Uh, why is that? And that's just because this formula yields 17 ounces or 482 grams of wax at 6% fragrance oil. So what happens if you don't wanna have leftover wax when making candles? What if you only want to make one small six ounce candle? And what if you wanna do 9% fragrance oil instead of 6%? This is exactly why it's only really good to use in the beginning, but not good to use long term because it's very limiting to only that much of wax and that percentage of fragrance oil. So moving right along to the candle making formula mistakes that I see. The first one is multiplying the fill weight by the fragrance oil percentage to get the fragrance oil weight. Along to the first example, and we will be using these numbers throughout the entire video, and that is the fill weight is eight ounces or 227 grams, and the fragrance oil percentage is 10%. So what I see a lot of people do to try to figure out how much fragrance oil and how much wax they need for one candle is they will multiply that fill weight by 10% to get the fragrance oil weight. So they will use this much of fragrance oil in the candle and just add it on top of the fill weight. Now, the only issue with that is that you will have an excess of liquid. You will be adding those two together. Yes, the percentage is going to be staying the same because the percentage, the fragrance oil is 10% of the wax weight. However, when you add it together, you're gonna to end up with too much overall liquid and it's going to overflow your jar. It's not going to be the fill level that you are wanting. So how do you avoid having excess liquid then? Um, and the answer is you have to remove some of the wax to make room for the fragrance oil. So then what I see a lot of people doing is they will multiply the fill weight by the fragrance oil percentage like we just did, and then replace that amount of wax with fragrance oil. So in the same example that we were just using, I see a lot of people, they multiply the fill weight by 10% and they get that fragrance oil weight but then they will subtract that fragrance oil weight from the fill weight to get the new wax weight. So when you look at it this way, it does equal that total eight ounces that we are looking for. We are looking for it to equal eight ounces and still having the fragrance oil be 10% of the wax. So looking at it this way, when you add these two together, it does equal that eight ounces of that fill weight. However, when we do the new 
percentage of the fragrance oil to wax, it is now a lot more because we took some of that wax away. So when you look at it this way, it now gives us 11% fragrance oil, which is now adding too much fragrance oil. And a common question I get after kind of explaining this is a lot of times people are looking at dividing the fragrance oil by the total amount to check the percentage but you have to divide the fragrance oil by the wax weight to check the percentage because the fragrance oil needs to be 10% of the wax weight, not the total weight. Because now in this candle, the fragrance oil is a part of that total weight. So we're just trying to make sure that the fragrance oil is 10% of the wax weight because now the total weight already includes the fragrance oil. All right, so moving on to section three, which is my candle making formula. So the first thing that you have to do before you do anything is you need to know your fill weight number and you have to choose Choose your desired fragrance oil percentage. So remember the fill weight test from earlier and also the fragrance oil percentage is based on the wax that you are using. And just so you guys know, we will continue using the same fill weight, eight ounces, and the same 10% fragrance oil as the previous examples. So my formula is the fill weight divided by 100% plus the fragrance oil percentage equals the wax weight. So what you do first is you just plug in what you know. So you take your fill weight, in this example it's eight ounces, and you take your fragrance oil percentage, and this is 10%, and you plug it into this first equation. And then all I'm gonna do is just add these two percentages together to get 110%. And then on a calculator, I just typed in eight divided by 110%, and I got 7.27 ounces of wax, and the same thing, of course, over here for grams. And this is now our wax weight. So all you have to do is just subtract the wax weight from the fill weight, and that gives you the fragrance oil percentage. So now we can check our work using the same methods as earlier on the previous equations. So the first thing that we need to check is to make sure that the fragrance oil weight is 10% of the wax weight. So on a calculator, all I do is just do 0.73 divided by 7.27, and that equals 10%. So that checks off. We also need to make sure that the total amount, that the fragrance oil weight and the wax weight equals that total fill weight that we're looking for. So on a calculator again, just double check that, and it does, it equals eight ounces. So this is very important and something that I noticed on my last video, make sure that you are not dropping the percentage sign on the calculator when doing this formula. You are dividing by 110%, not 110. If you just do 110, you're gonna get a different number and it's gonna throw everything off. So make sure that you don't drop this percentage, it's very, very important. So just to sum everything up, this is essentially what we're trying to find. So yes, I'm using variables, don't let it scare you. A is just representing the fragrance oil weight and B is representing the wax weight. So we're just trying to find two numbers where one number, the fragrance oil, is 10% of another number, the wax weight, and whose sum equals eight ounces or whatever desired fill weight you are looking to get. And it needs to pass both of these equations. A divided by B, so the fragrance oil weight divided by the wax weight, has to equal the fragrance oil weight of that 10%. And then A, the fragrance oil weight, plus B, the wax weight, needs to equal that fill weight. That's exactly what we did right over here, and it passed the check test. And if you guys are looking to make more than one candle at a time using this formula, all you have to do is just simply multiply both the fragrance oil weight and the wax weight by the amount of candles you wanna make. So for example, if you were wanting to make five candles, just multiply both of those numbers by five and you have your new numbers to make five of those candles. Now, something else to note is that if you guys are using jars without fill lines, you will have to have some sort of indication on how high you want to fill up your candle to. So right over here, I use a little piece of folded up aluminum foil. So what I do is I pour one candle and then I make a mold of that and then when I'm pouring multiple candles I know how high to fill up that candle to to equal that total um, net weight that I'm looking for. And then just some last notes to answer some questions that I also always get all the time. If you are adding color blocks, dye chips, liquid coloring, 
that is going to add such an insignificant amount of weight to your candle. So you don't have to calculate that into the formula. Most of the time, I feel like it's going to add maybe a gram or two. And again, it's not going to make a difference in the formula. So go ahead and color your candles without having to worry about calculating it into the formula. And also this formula works for all waxes and it can be used for tart wax, tart molds, wax melts, tea lights, sample sizes. Um, I've used it with my tiny little tea lights before and it's totally fine. All you have to do is just figure out the weight needed for one and then go back and multiply those numbers by however many you want to make. All right, guys, so that is it for today's little presentation on this entire math lesson. I really hope that you guys enjoyed and that you learned something. If you still have any further questions, I really hope that I answered most of them. But if you do, please leave them in the comment section below. But other than that, I, again, really hope you guys enjoyed. Please go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up if you liked it, as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go follow me over on Instagram at MemoryBoxCandleCo. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.